So this is one of my case, which I means not my case, but one of the cases which I revised. Looks very scary. Uh, so cage migration in MI stilips. This morning we were discussing about the MI stilip. Uh, Dr. Ayush was performing the surgery, and there was a lot of discussion about the right side of the right size of the cage. Um, so always there will be you will be concerned about whether you should put a cage of bigger size or smaller size, and how to kind of you know make sure that it doesn't come out. So. We had this case, 60-year-old female, diabetic, hypertensive, osteoporotic, with the deck size scan of minus 2.2. Um, MRI showed that she had alpha S1 disc pathology with significant bilateral radiculopathy. Conjunctive treatment failed, so she was taken up for the surgery. And uh, alpha S1 MI stilip surgery was done. Interop screw hold was not fantastic, but it was uh, sufficient. Um, there was a slight break in the uh, postal. Uh, post to inferior corner of the L5 and the cage was sitting little oblique in that uh, place and it was it probably didn't go down uh, deep enough luckily patient did well for uh, in the immediate post op period she was discharged post op day 3 so so far everything went perfect however the patient returned on post op day 8 with the left foot drop and with the increase in the back pain also this x ray is oblique but uh, there was some suspicion that the cage probably is slightly backing out Patient was sent for a CT scan, and uh, CT kind of confirmed that the cage was coming out in the left foraminal area, which was very well seen over here. So what should we do? So after a lot of discussion with the patient and um, uh, discussion with the colleagues, the patient was uh, taken back for the surgery. But then if you think about it, why it happened? So I think in this particular case, there was an initial male position of the cage, and there was a break in the end plate also, which didn't let the cage get compressed against the uh, alpha S1 uh, end plates. Osteopoise also contributed to some extent. And um, in this particular case, the cage was perfect size. But if you are putting an undersized cage, then probably the chances of cage backing out are more. And uh, if you are putting an oversized cage, then probably you are trying to break the end plates. And the cage will not be held in the position rightly. And then it can lead to subsidence. And uh, that's another sort of problem. Uh, MI still poses a particular unique problem that you are not able to compress with most of the system which are available you are you they don't have a good compression system so you are not able to like in an open surgery you put that compressor at the end after putting the cage uh, you 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 uh, press you compress across the screw which is not very well done most of the time in MI still surgery and I think that's one of the main reason and if you are not able to insert the cage deep enough then that's another issue one of the unique problems, like this was discussed in the morning also, there were two uh, uh, schools of thoughts. One school was saying that uh, we had to put just right size of the cage or maybe one size smaller. But then uh, uh, some of our, our other colleague was mentioning that we can put size 14 or 16 of the cage also, which may or may not be possible every time when you are, especially when you are doing the surgery through the tube. So that can pose a different kind of issue. In the long term, Literature says that most of these cases, uh, this uh, kind of back out at around three months time. And I think in those situations, it's mostly uh, the lack of union happening at the operated side, which uh, contributes to the cage failure. So the treatment, most common treatment is that you, if the cage has backed out, then you remove it, you put a bigger cage, you put more bone graft, and that's it, you know, and you recompress it. Uh, other than that, if you lose screws also along with the backed out case, then you put the bigger screw, diameter screw, otherwise you go to the next level and uh, extend your infusion levels. End plate fractures, if they are there, then it's better not to re-put the cage and rather than just put the bone graft and um, maybe bone graft extenders. You can, you can take a piece of the iliac crest graft and just shove it in as a, as a cage itself. If it's a proven case of non-union in the long term, then you can probably put a bigger cage or more bone graft on. You can, or you can leave that cage if it's not able to come out because of fibrosis or because of its position against the dura, then you can probably go on the other side and put a bigger size of cage. And in extreme situation, you can go anterior like you do an ACDF, and you can remove the cage from the front, and you can do an A-lift or O-lift sort of procedure. In this particular case, um, the cage was removed a bigger size of cage was reinserted and that uh, because even this cage was trying to back out so there was a uh, uh, another cortical screw was placed so that the cage should not be coming out so that the head of the screw was kind of preventing the cage from backing out now this is the case which i which uh, we saw in the beginning uh, and mi still if done, done somewhere else and uh, the patient presented to me 3 years post uh, index surgery with a severe bilateral leg pain 
um, the cage was uh, uh, like it was almost out and the patient was having severe leg pain so she was taken up for the surgery this time we didn't go for an another MIS procedure we did an open uh, midline approach uh, the plan was to remove both the screws and if possible remove the cage also and then uh, depending upon the situation you know like we were ready with the uh, another fusion however and the cage was like kind of sitting like this so it's like uh, indenting inside the dura significantly we were not able to remove the case so we just did elf bilateral l5 and s1 now root decompression though they were uh, projecting backward but then there were nothing else we could do the fusion had already taken place we could not break it and remove it so we thought that we'll just uh, uh, we screws were removed because they were loose so uh, but the fusion had taken place probably it took place after the screws got loose so the cage was left inside luckily patient did well and uh, recently this is her uh, post second surgery five years follow up luckily the cage is still staying in the place we were not able to achieve uh, means kind of approach it whatever we could feel the cage was not buzzing at all so we just left it and patients uh, incidentally doing okay so if uh, when i looked at the literature there were few risk factors so a bullet cage is more likely to back out compared to a banana cage if your end plates are linear they are straight compared to a biconcave end plate then the cage will uh, back out probably more often a smaller case contrary to what we discussed in the morning will probably back out more often and if you are doing a two level t lift then chances of that happening are more literature goes from 1.7 percent to 6 point some percent is but the most of the time it's 4.4 percent you know like uh, about 1 in 20 cages might back out younger age people male more at l5 s1 less surgeon experience and more in the spondylolisthesis cases uh, the chances of this happening are more and they have come out with some sort of classification system also depending upon whether the patient is radiculopathy or not or it's only back pain and what's the grade of the radiculopathy in an older patient when there is screw loosening and end plate fracture is also there then then chances of cage backing out are more which is uh, which is a common sense so how to prevent so when you are preparing your end plate you need to be very very careful you should not cave in but at the same time you should remove sufficient amount of cartilaginous end plate so that patient uh, the fuse level can actually fuse and it's not just uh, instrumented you need to put adequate bone graft but it should not be too much also that the, you don't have a space left for the cage to go in cage should be sufficiently uh, uh, sitting inside the uh, disc space and for the same reason the dolphin nose cages which can be inserted deep down are, are very good uh, there are different kind of systems available for MI steel surgeries and uh, you need to choose a system which allows you an adequate amount of compression across the end plate and so that the, the chances of the cage breaking out becomes less. Uh, peak versus titanium literature says that the peak cages chances of backing out are more because it doesn't integrate but I think the smooth surface whether it's peak or titanium doesn't uh, make a much difference unless you are using a mesh titanium kind of cage. There are some peculiar problems to MI still if compared to an open surgery wherein uh, there is always difficulty in putting a larger size of cage especially if you are doing a uh, uh, MI still through a tube rather than an expandable retractor. So um, though we are able to insert a size 14 cage but if your disc space is very high uh, then it's like 16 or so then it will be very very difficult to insert that cage and then you are always worried about that uh, your exiting nerve root also might get uh, hit while putting the cage in. The, End plates are uh, preparation is also to make some extent compromise because you are not uh, having those right kind of if you are especially if you are not having those right kind of instrument. Bone grafting always slightly compromised especially because you are taking just a little bit of that facet and unless you have uh, used some bone graft extenders then probably your bone graft many times might not be enough to achieve the fusion and then this can lead to uh, late onset uh, cage back out and as we said inadequate compression across the screw can definitely be a region, especially in an MISTA procedure. Thank you.